What is going on guys? Welcome to another Python charting live tutorial. Uh, in the last video I was showing you guys how to convert the uh, old uh, one day open high low close chart or at least the one that required a date stamp to now it uh, allows for a Unix stamp. And that's where we left off. Um, now we want to actually make it a live chart. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you remember before, the animation ability just requires us to pass a function through it and that function that we pass through it just needs to make a graph right so luckily for us we already have that function it's right here graph data and we're already calling it way down here graph data right down here right so that's all we have to do right so um, the only major difference that we're going to need to make is to move let me actually bring up the uh, old thing so here here is the animation right so comparing this to our graphing functionality right now, there's really only a couple differences at, at all. So the plot show is done outside of the, the function, and the figure is defined outside of the function. This is so the figure itself isn't redrawn every time. And uh, otherwise, oh, and the other, other, other thing is it's clearing the axes. So in this case, we only had one axis, and it's clearing it. Uh, we're going to need to clear everything so we don't just go crazy on the memory. Uh, so we're going to do that. And But anyway, so what we're going to do is just kind of mesh these two uh, things together. So what I'm going to want to do now is let's scroll, uh, go to the bottom of your script, and this is where we're going to add our animate function. And it's going to be a pretty simple function. <laughs> it's just going to be define animate i, simple, 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 and all we want to do in animate i is call this. So I'm going to just cut, paste, stock. Uh, that's going to remain the same. Um, now the other thing I'm going to do is go to this old uh, graph thing here and just copy. Actually, let's copy and paste both of these. So copy that. Come down here. Paste. Paste. Or uh, tab, rather, not paste. <laughs> Uh, and fig, animate, intervals, everything, let's see, yeah, everything should be the same, uh, there's no change there. So, okay, the other thing we need to do, uh, comment out this plot show, we're already doing that, no need to save it every time, although, uh, just for the record, uh, anybody that has followed my Django tutorials um, with this plot, or with this figure thing, what you can do is using JavaScript, uh, on a website, if you if you did follow my Django tutorial, you can post up these uh, images onto. I showed you guys how to post up images onto your Django website. Well, with JavaScript, you can make those images update live. Subsequently, you can run this plot. Uh, you can save the figure to the same you know figure name every time. Run a JavaScript that's or uh, even like a JSON that feeds in the image information really, and have that update live and you have a live updating graph. Obviously it wouldn't be interactive in any way, it would just be visually updating. Um, but you could you could actually do that on your Django site, just for the record. Anyway, comment that out though for now, because we're not actually going to use that. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing we need to do is we need to move the definition of our figure out of uh, this. Where is the definition of our figure? Um, I have to do control F or something. I don't know where our figure definition is. Here we go, finally. Okay, so it was, uh, let's see, I don't know, 30 lines down, right underneath the definition of AV1, AV2, SP, and then figure. So just like highlight that, control X, for cut, come all the way down to the bottom, and we'll just paste that right here. Uh, you put that anywhere outside of a function, doesn't really matter where you stuff that. Have to move that out though. And the only other thing that we need to do really is scroll to the top of your script on, on this graph data. Um, and come down here and call fig.clf empty parameters. What this is going to do is clear the figure every time. Now, because the definition of figure is outside of a function, it will run and it will define a figure uh, before. Uh, this is ever called so you don't have to worry about it, it failing at some point or, or whatever 
And I, I, I think we're all set. Uh, let me just, let's look through this one last time, make sure we're doing everything the way that we want to do it. And plus show, interval. We don't really need a one second interval, that's for sure. We'll, we'll change that to three just in case we have an error. Sometimes you have an error and it like, <laughs> the chart goes crazy on you. Uh, <laughs> anyway, save. And um, I guess we're ready to run. So let me run it stock to plot and just for the record we can clean this up in a little bit but keep in mind this is a while true loop and the while true loop is going to run animation and in animation uh, it runs graph data so every three seconds it's going to run uh, this function this entire function so you're going to get a lot of repeat like currently pulling currently pulling currently pulling and if you have any error it's going to be like error it's going to be a lot of errors so anyway, stuck to plot Apple. Let's just okay, and it, okay. I knew we were gonna have to forget something. <laughs> anyway, we need to import that animation from Matplotlib. So we'll just come down here, and we're gonna do uh, import Matplotlib.animation as animation. Save that. Run it again, and endure the error because you. Uh, uh, gave a figure and you never showed it and it makes Python very angry when you do that. <laughs> At least it does for me. Anyway, Apple, please work. Cool. All right, so here is Apple. We are running it every three, and you actually just updated now. That's kind of a bummer. <laughs> Hopefully you guys saw that. Uh, but anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to walk away from the computer and do a few things, and we should get at least a few updates uh, showing. So let me just... Let's do this, make it nice and pretty over here. Cool. All right, so I'm just going to let it update for a little bit, and uh, I'll speed it up in the video as it goes. All right, so we've seen quite a few updates, and uh, while I was gone, I realized that I wonder how delayed the Yahoo API really is because again now the market has been open for an hour and a half and we've got you know this many minutes worth of updates uh, but we're dealing with a 50 simple moving average which means 50 plots won't even show and so again we're an hour and a half into the market open we've got uh, I'll count them and pause while I count them at the moment 39 so at one more 40, that would mean we'd had a 130, um, or rather, <laughs> sorry, an hour and a half worth of update though, worth of updates, right? So you'd have 60 plus 30, right? So 90 updates. So you'd have an hour and a half. So to be honest, I don't even, I'm, I'm not positive. I, I'm pretty sure the data is delayed, uh, but we have an hour and a half worth of data. So I don't know. So maybe it's real time. But anyway, um, as you can probably see in the video, the chart is updating real time. Um, so yeah, I'm going to close out of the chart now. And that pretty much covers the live updating um, chart. Uh, the, there's a couple more things I still want to do to this chart, however. I want to um, get rid of empty time. Uh, so, uh, like, like we were just looking at with the three day, how it had that massive gap because of the weekend. And then you've also got overnight gaps. Uh, so we want to get rid of those gaps, or at least I'll show you guys how to get rid of them. If you want to the one day open high, low close, uh, I actually kind of, if you're looking at data with one day open high, low close in mind, I don't really think that you want to get rid of the gaps. I, I don't think they make a big enough difference. And sometimes it's pretty beneficial to see the gaps, but uh, in the scenario of what we're doing here, it's a huge deal. Like if you want to look at three day open high low close, it's just it's really hard to look at the graph uh, and not cry. So um, so I'll be showing that. Also, what I want to start doing is I'll show you guys how to incorporate um, possibly the RSI, maybe a buy signal from the RSI, and then also or, or sell signal even, or you know a range of signals based on the RSI. Uh, we'll probably do that first, maybe the, the MACD, <clears throat> but we'll start with the RSI and I'll show you guys how you can dynamically change um, uh, the spines of the chart. And if, if anybody isn't too positive on what the spine of the chart is, let me pull up a Yahoo chart real quick. And 
Uh, actually, hold on, let's... Uh, So here's our Yahoo chart. The spines are like what's uh, blue here, right? So all of this is a spine. So it's obviously not integral that these spines are blue. They could be anything, right? So we can not only, we can, we can change the color of the spines. Uh, we can also change the color of all the tick labels. So what I've done in the past is like, like for right now, it's kind of the RSI, let's say we're using as an indicator. It's kind of in the middle. So maybe leave it blue because it's, it's dull-ish. But if our RSI was maybe um, crossing over um, into, let's say, this area here, so it's like overbought, like as it gets closer to this line, we might end up changing the color of these spines more to red or the tick labels to red. And as it lowers, it's getting closer to green. And that way you can eventually not only have Yahoo up here, but you could have a massive figure with like Yahoo here, Apple here, Google here, Microsoft here, and so on, all the way down. You can have like 50, um, 50 stocks on like one one monitor, basically, uh, just like this. And you have the MACD, the RSI, the actual price. They're all updating live, and and I'm starting to think that the Yahoo API is, is live. Uh, something must be wrong here. I, I'm not sure how it could possibly be live. I'm pretty sure they have to be delayed. But anyway. Uh, near live prices anyways and um, that way you can actually monitor all of these stocks at the same time and just visually quickly see even though you can quickly like look through the uh, the actual um, the RSI itself and, and see it it's really it makes it really really easy when the charts are like color coded uh, based on either a buy or a sell signal and then I can even start showing you guys how you can um, begin to um, possibly incorporate maybe RSI plus MACD, right? So you have some buy and sell indications from the RSI. You've also got buy and sell indications that come from the MACD. You've also got buy and sell indications based on these moving averages. So uh, with all that, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. And again, the whole purpose of the, the these, this series uh, with the charting was so you guys can do it on your own. Because a lot of people, uh, many people actually buy uh, access, access. <laughs> conversion of axes and access by access to charting applications like this that do stuff like this for them and it, you just you really don't have to do that you can you can do pretty much everything yourself and um, I'd like to think that everybody that started this series didn't really need any knowledge in Python or matplotlib and can get to this point so it's definitely useful stuff to have so anyways, with that, I'm going to conclude this video. I, I think probably the next video we'll, we'll, we'll chop out the uh, gaps in the three-day, and then we'll start working on the live updating dynamic uh, spines and stuff. And we'll, we'll start with just like a very simple, just, just with the RSI and so on. So anyways, uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Hopefully uh, you've had um, some sense of accomplishment at the uh, live updating chart. I, I really like my live updating charts. Um, it took me a while to figure it out and it's actually pretty basic. I, I don't know why that there's not more information out there on how to make a, a live updating chart, but that's the way it is. Uh, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Uh, if you have any problems, anything going wrong, please feel free to leave a comment below. I do get them and I respond to them. So um, with that, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.